And so we are uh, traveling through a series, uh, this will be week four, that we're calling Life in the Spirit. And so what does it mean to, to practically, to follow God in this life, to follow the Holy Spirit? Um, the, the series uh, came from an old uh, uh, commentary, it was a Bible called Life in the Spirit Bible. It's actually called the Fire Bible now. I, think, I thought it was called Life Application Bible. But it was a Life in the Spirit Bible. It was the first like uh, commentary Bible that I ever had. And I uh, really, really enjoyed it. But it also came from, um, it came from a, an old saying that the Celtic Christians had that they referred to the Holy Spirit. They called him um, the wild goose. And, and so in, in their minds, following the Holy Spirit uh, was like following a wild goose. You never, knew, you never knew where you may end up. You never knew where you may end up going. And, uh, and, and so we've been f following through this series for, this is week four. We've looked at the fruit of the Spirit. We've looked at gifts in the Spirit. Uh, we looked at what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. And, and today, I, I really wanted to just answer one question. And, and I think that's, and, and it's a question that I ask all the time <laughs> to myself is how do I know when it's the Holy Spirit speaking to me? Like, how do I know when it's God leading me to do this or if it's just me, right? How, how, do, I, how do I separate a good thought from a God thought, right? A good idea from a God idea. How, how do I know when it's me? Or Because we know there's a lot of voices in our lives, a lot of voices in our lives, a lot of folks telling us how to live and what to do, a lot of influences trying to guide and direct and be kind of true north in our life. And so, so how do we know when it's the Holy Spirit? And, and not like, I, you know, maybe I had bad pizza the night before. I, I don't know. You know, how, how do we separate that? And, and so I wanted just one verse is going to be our, our, our verse this morning. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. And, and so John opens up his book with a, with a pretty bold statement. And he says, Beloved, talking to the church, me and you, he says, don't believe every spirit. But test the spirits. Somebody say test. Test the spirits to see whether they're from God. And this is why. Because there's many false prophets have gone out into the world. So I don't know if this verse is any more relevant now than it's ever been. Because there's a lot of people talking for God right now. There, there's a, and not only that, this verse lets me know that there's more than just the Holy Spirit trying to speak to me. There's more than just God's spirit trying to influence my life. Uh, uh, you know, that there's, there are other spirits and there are other influences out there that would love to get your life off track, but would love to get your life into a mess. And, and, and so how do I know when it's the Holy Spirit? Well, it's, it's, I think it's, this may be one of the most important things as Christians that we can learn to do is to follow the voice of God in our life. And I know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of Christians that don't believe that God speaks anymore. And we know that God speaks through his word, 100%. We know that. But Dallas Willard, he says it best. He says one of the greatest injustices we can do to people is tell them that they can have a relationship with God and also tell them that God doesn't speak anymore. And so that's the, I think that's the only way to cultivate relationship is it's through talking and it's through communion. And so we believe as a church that God still speaks. He speaks through his word. He speaks through, he can speak through people. He's, I mean, if we look in the Bible and the different ways that God speaks, he's, he speaks through nature sometimes to people. There's all these different situations. But how do I boil it down to know that this is definitely God, this is the Holy Spirit, and this is not? And it's, and it's so careful. You've got to be so careful because even, uh, um, this is not in your notes, but I wanted to share it with you. In Matthew 16, we have a story about a, a guy named Peter. We know that Peter was a little rough around the edges, right? He was a fisherman, and, and he, Jesus called him to follow him and be his disciple, to leave his nets behind and follow him. So he left his job as a fisherman to follow Jesus. And somewhere along that three-year journey of following Jesus, there's a conversation that happens. And Jesus asked Peter, who, who do men say that I am? And Peter starts telling him in Matthew 16, well, some say you're like John the Baptist. And some say you're Elijah. Some say you're a prophet. And, and, and Jesus is like, well, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, well, I believe you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And then immediately Jesus says, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. 
Like that, that is a thought, that is an idea that did not come from the world or your flesh. That is a God idea. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. A few verses later, okay, a few verses later, Matthew 16, Jesus is talking to Peter and his disciples says, Hey, fellas, I, I got to go to the cross in just a few days. I got to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be crucified and, and then I'm going to resurrect. And in the middle of that statement, Peter says, No way, it's not going to happen. And Jesus rebukes him. And he says, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you don't know what spirit you're of. In the same chapter, <laughs> okay? I don't know if it's the same conversation, but Peter went from hearing from the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to like speaking words that weren't under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And, and so how do, we, how do we know? How do we know? And I wanted to just give you five things I feel like have helped me. To, to discern when God, when it's God speaking to me, or maybe it's just me, or, or other influences in my life. And I think the first one, and which is really, and again, I think these five, like if I'm going to filter something that God is, is speaking to me, I'm going to want them to go through all five of these. Not just one, or maybe two of them, but all, all five. And, and the first one is, it was when, when I feel like God is speaking to me, the Holy Spirit, I've got to ask myself, does it agree with the Bible? And by agreement, I mean the full counsel of God, right? Not just one verse, you know, in Leviticus. Or, you know, like, like, like well, there's that one verse. Well, there's that one guy that did that. And I think somewhere in between the lines, he probably did this. You know, like, no, no. Like, does it agree with the full counsel of God? The, the whole thing, the whole book. Because the Bible doesn't contradict itself. And, and so when God speaks to me or I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me to do something, my, my first stop is going to be the Word of God. And I'm finding in my life, the more of the word that I have, the more I'm reading the word, the more I hear from God. Because it's, it's a way to gauge it. It's a way to know, okay, is this the Holy Spirit or is this a different spirit? Because I, I know not 100% of the time it's, it's going to line up with God's word. And if it contradicts God's word, I, I know that it's, it's not the Holy Spirit. And, and this is what we know about God. He's the same today yesterday and forever and so god doesn't change his mind and so if god called something wrong six thousand years ago it's still wrong today if god blessed something six thousand years ago right uh, he's going to still bless it today we change our minds all the time like like every other week it seems like i mean imagine pulling out a science book from 50 years ago there's so much like like research changes rapidly the medical field changes rapidly. Medical journals 100 years ago are almost useless today. There's just things that we are learning and evolving. But when it comes to the word of God, it doesn't change. It's, it's steadfast. And so the, the more that we read the, the word, the more that we'll know when God is speaking to us and know when he's not. Luke chapter 21 verse 33 says, heaven and earth will pass away. So that means everything we see right now is going gonna, is gonna to change. The universe is going to pass away. But, but God is so, he is so steadfast. He, is, he has really he has placed his, his character behind his word. He says, all this stuff I've created is going to pass away, but my word will stand forever. And so the more of the word that we get in our life, the more we're going to hear from God. And, and, and what's, what's even more powerful is this, Proverbs 12, verse 19. We know that truth stands the test of time. And this is so important right now because there's a lot of people and there's a lot of influences that are taking God's word and they're changing it just a little bit. Right? It's like, you know, just, just a little, just a little, little, I'm going to take this off here. I'm going to add this here. And it's dangerous. And so that's why I think it's so important that we know the word for ourselves. And that's why I welcome when, when people, you know, hey, you said this. What did you mean by that? Because I know I can say things that, is, that are slap crazy sometimes, all right? Like, I know that. <laughs> and, so, it, 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 and that's why I think they had, there was this group of believers in the New Testament known as Bereans. And all they did was challenge and test what was being preached to make sure that it lined up with the word. And, and so Paul, it was so... He, he was so like, this was so important to him. He said this in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. He says, even if an angel from heaven shows up at your door, 
wings eight foot tall and everything, okay? Just decide, I mean, that would be pretty, pretty scary. I don't know. Uh, but, but if an angel shows up at your house and preaches another gospel besides the one that you've heard in this book, pa- Paul says, don't believe it. And so you would think, okay, why would he even need to say that, right? But, but I, I think that the, the heart behind it is the more of the word of God that we have in our life, the more we're going to be able to recognize his voice and the more that we're going to know when it's not him. And, 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 you know, Satan is a master at that. He's disguised himself as an angel of light. At one point, he was good. He knows the Bible probably better than any human ever has. And so it's so critically important that, that when I, if, if I feel like I have an impression from God and it violates something in the Word of God, I can immediately know that that wasn't the Lord. <laughs> right? Like, God is not going to tell me to hurt someone. God's not going to tell me to harm someone, right? God is not going to, like, when that, so we'll, we filter it, number one, through the, the Word of God. I think that's our first, our first step. So number two would be, okay, how do I know this is the Holy Spirit talking to me? Well, does it, does it make me more like Jesus? Is, it, is this something that Jesus would do? Is this, somewhere, is this something that Jesus would say? Right, those little cool, they, those bracelets were super popular for years. Those, um, you know, what would Jesus do bracelets? We got some here at the church, we give them out. And I, I, simple, but I thought it was really, really powerful. Like, that's a good way to filter, okay, w- if God is leading me to do this, is this something that's in the, the character of Jesus? Is this making me more like him? That's, that's the Holy Spirit's, one of his primary roles is, is not to, um, you know, not only is he a guide, not only is he a comforter, he's there to help us, but the biggest part is he, he, is, he is preparing us to meet God the Father, right? And he is making us in the image of, of, of Christ the Son. And, and so when, when I feel like God is speaking to me, that's another big question I want to ask myself. Does it make me more like Jesus? Well, well what was he like? Well, we looked at Galatians 5 already. I think the character of Jesus was, you know, the, the, the nine fruit of the Spirit, he perfected them. It's the law of love. He went out of his way to, to, to help those that were hurting. He wasn't intimidated by the religious leaders. He was drawn to people that were hurting the most. He, 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 I mean, he would reach down, and, and when the law said she should be stoned, he extends mercy and grace. I mean, he, he perfected what we know as, as, as being a Christian and, and walking in the light. But there's another list I wanted to give you in, J, in James chapter 3. How do I discern if this, if this impression is the, whole, is the Holy Spirit or if it's just me? It's verses 14 through 17. But if you harbor bitterness or envy or selfish ambition, ambition that wisdom is not coming from God. But it's earthly. It's unspiritual. Jameson says it's even, it's demonic. But the wisdom, the the leading of the Holy Spirit that comes from heaven, he gives a list here. It's pure, it's peace-loving, it's considerate, it's submissive, it's full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and and sincere. So he gives three things that that wisdom from, from heaven will never be like. Like this, I can know immediately it's not from God if number one, if it's out of bitterness or revenge. Like, I'm going to get that person back. God's on my side, right? He told me so. If it's, if it's motivated by, well, you did this to me, so I'm going to do this back. Or if it's manipulation, right? I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to use the God card to get this person to do something I want them to do. Because he says that's not from heaven. He says that's not the Holy Spirit. The second thing is envy. And that's basically, well... I really like the car they got, so I'm going to buy a better one. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they got the 2020. I'm going to get the 2022 with the leather. You know what I mean? Like, like, like out of envy, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this thing because I want to be better than that person. And, and, and that's, that's what he's saying. He's like, that kind of motivation, is, that's not from heaven. And then he just says selfish ambition. I've had a couple folks tell me, man, God gave me this good idea, and it's going to make me a lot of money. I'm like, cool, um, I got something else to do, right? You know, no, no, because I, I, I just, when I read the, the, the Bible, it's, I don't think God is really motivated by people making a lot of money. Is, is it going to impact a lot of people? Is it going to help a lot of people? And so I think we got to filter it. We really do. Like, is, is, this, is this the Holy Spirit? Is it not the Holy Spirit? Seven things I know if it's from God, does it produce peace in my life? 
Is it considerate? Like, is this going to hurt someone else? If I do this, I feel like God is calling me to leave this person or do this or that. Am I considering how it's going to affect the others in my life? Considerate, submissive. What does my wife think about it? Come on, so I, hey, what, what does my husband think about it? Submissive, it's not just my idea and nobody else knows about it. Uh, is it full of mercy, impartial and sincere? I think that's a really, really good list. And so number one, does it agree with the Bible? Number two, does it make me more like Jesus? And then I think here's another one that, that, that I've tried to do in my life that's helped me. And is, do the, do the people in my life that love me confirm it? Like, is this, have I told anyone else this idea that I feel like God gave me or, or this, this, this impression or I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me to do this? How many people have I bounced that off of? I'm not saying you need to make a poll on Facebook. Okay, that, that's kind of because we jump straight to that. And that's, that's not what I'm saying. The people in your life that love you, and I know you have them, right? It could be a grandma or a grandpa, a mom or dad or a mentor, a pastor or a coach. Do the people in my life confirm it in me? Do they, do they see that in me? Like if, if God is, is leading me to do this or start this business or, or connect with this person in a partnership or whatever it may be, do, do the people that love me, that have my back, confirm it? Do they see that? Is that, is that something that, that, that they could see me doing? And it's, I, I know that sounds kind of silly, but... Look at this in Proverbs 11, verse 9. The wisdom of the righteous can, can save you. Another, another proverb, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So I, I think there's a lot of wisdom in, in bringing an idea that we believe is from the Lord and bouncing it off the people in my life that I know have, have the best, you know, that best interest in mind for me. Um, I think that's really, really important. And, and so, so have, I, have I talked to others about it? Do others confirm what I'm feeling or, or sensing in my life? And I think here's a, a, a fourth one that's, that's a pretty major one. Is, is, it, is it my responsibility? Like, I think there's times where God may show you things and speak to you for another person. The Bible calls that pro prophecy. And I, I looked up, there's like 400 times or so where the Holy Spirit would move on a person's life and they would do something. Right? Like it would produce something in their life. In the Old Testament and New, the, the one that really rose to the top was prophecy. That the Holy Spirit would, would show something to someone in their life, either for a group of people or for themselves. And, and so if you are, are familiar or are raised in, in a more charismatic or Pentecostal church, you've probably seen this happen all the time, right? You might get three or four words of prophecy every Sunday morning, uh, you know, like, and, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, I have no idea what he's talking about right now, and that's okay. Uh, but, but what I, I think the, the biggest thing with this is, is a lot of people have been hurt by that, that one gifting right there being abused, in my experience. A lot of people that, I feel like most of what I do as a pastor lately has been more like um, damage control kind of thing. Uh, and, and, and people have, have been hurt at other churches or they feel like they've been manipulated. And oftentimes it's connected to this right here. That, that someone said something that God told me to tell you. And how do you argue with that, right? If somebody walks up to you, it's, I had a, before we planted the, the church, I said, Lord, that was six years ago. There was another church that was meeting in this area, and uh, one of the board members called me and said, Nathan, we've all prayed, and, and we've all got confirmation. You're supposed to come and be our pastor. Yeah, and I, and I said, well, thank you, but God hasn't said that to me. And, uh, and, I, and I only told my wife about it, and I'm like, they're crazy. I don't know what kind of Kool-Aid they're drinking over there. But, uh, but, but so, so again, I think there's a, here's a few things if God gives you a word for somebody else or, or shows you something about someone. We get in trouble when we try to play the Holy Spirit in other people's lives. Billy Graham said it like this. It's my job to love. It's God's, it's God's job to convict. It's not my job. And so if I feel like I have something for someone else that God has spoken to me, the first thing I would ask you to do is, is just be patient and pray. 
that maybe God showed you that or you, you've seen that at work or you know that person may be struggling in an area. Maybe God showed you that not so you could like confront them about it, but so you could pray for them. You know, pray that they would see it. Pray that God would convict them. Pray that God would show them. You know, the, the second thing I would say is, is uh, um, when, if, if it is something for someone else, 99% of the time you're going to confirm what they're already feeling. Like when, when someone, like I know it's the Lord when, when, when somebody speaks something into my life or they say, hey, this, you've been on my heart and, and I want to share this with you. It's, it's in direct confirmation with what I've already been feeling and experiencing. And then I think the third thing, if, if I, I feel like I have a message for someone else, is, is I'm, in my experience, God speaks through people and they don't even realize that it's happening. It's very relational. It's not announced. It's not, thus saith the Lord, right? Like, like hey, everybody be quiet real quick. I'm going to stand you up in the crowd and, and, and start reading your mail. And I know we've seen that happen before and in other settings, but what I've found in, in my life is that God will speak through people and they don't even have a clue what they're saying. They're just whatever, like they're speaking encouragement or, hey, this verse was on my heart. I wanted to share it with you. They had no idea that that verse... Was it, I read that morning, right? That, that happened just a couple months ago. I had two different people share the same verse with me in the same day, and it was exactly what I needed. They didn't have any idea, I don't think, what I was going through or walking through. And, and so I think that's why it's so critical that we are in groups and we are in community and in smaller circles with other people. That, so they know what's going on in our life. They know how to pray for us, but God will speak through those people. And it could just be a word of encouragement, and God will speak through you. But I, I think we can get in trouble when we feel like it's our, our job to fix somebody. Or God gave me this word, and I'm coming, and I got, I've got both, both barrels loaded. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I've, got, I've got it, and we're, we're about to go to town. But I don't, I don't think that's the way it works. Romans 10 says it like this. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. So then each of us will give an account for our own selves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment one to another. Instead, make your mind up not to put a stumbling block or an obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. And so let's, so let's let God speak to, to that person. And a lot of times he will before we even have a chance to share what maybe we've had in our hearts for them. And, and this is the, the, the last one, and I, I, think it's, I think it's the most important. You know, week, week two, we looked at the five things that Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do in our lives. That he, he uses the statement, he will. And he's going to guide you. He's going to show you things that you didn't know before, lead you into all truth. And, and right there in the heart of that, John 14, I'm going to read it first. He's talking to his disciples. He's preparing them for the coming of the Holy Spirit in a way that they've never seen in their life. I'm going to read it out of a paraphrase version. It's the message version. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. John 14. The friend. Somebody say friend. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request. He's going to make everything plain to you. He will remind you of the things I've told you. And I'm going to leave you well and whole. And, and this is my parting gift to you. Wrapped up in this package, one word, peace. I don't leave you this, the way the world has left you, feeling abandoned or alone. So don't be upset and don't be distraught. And it seems like our world is, is like getting a little more and more confused by the day. Have you noticed that? Like nobody has the answers for what's going on. There's a lot of confusion. Uh, even people in power and in leadership roles don't know what to do, right? Like there's some major things facing our world, facing, uh, and this is, I mean, this is not unique, but I feel like it's ramped up in the last several years. And one of the things that Jesus said would be the trademark of living this life in the Spirit, of walking in the Spirit, is not only just living aware that we have a connection with God all the time, 
That like when I, you know, Monday morning when I show up at work, I don't have to run to the church to pray first before I take that, um, you know, before I sign that contract or I don't. It's an everyday awareness of God's spirit is with you. And the fruit of that is that when, I'm, when I am walking in with that awareness and knowing that God is with me at all times and, and I don't have to call a pope or the priest or the pastor before I, I take this next step, if it's a big one, you may want to get some counsel, but knowing God is with me all the time, that, that the, I think the biggest benefit of that is walking in peace. Because not every good opportunity is going to be a God one. And not every good, you know, thing that presents itself in your life that looks like you should take that deal or it looks like you should take that, that you know, promotion is, is going to be from God. And so discerning between the two, I think the, the, what's been the greatest resource for me is just asking God, Lord, if, if you're in this, if this is what you want me to do, Lord, give me your peace. I mean, what, and what is the value of peace in 2022? I mean, you can't buy a good night's sleep no matter how much money you got, no matter how, how successful you are. There are people way smarter than us and way more wealthier than us that would love to just have one good night's rest and they don't have it. Jesus warned there's going to come a time in life where there's going to be all these blinking lights and it's going to say, that, hey, gain the world, but if you gain it all, you're going to lose something And I know I have, I have jumped headlong into some really, really bad scenarios because I got ahead of God. I got in a hurry. And I didn't have a piece about it, but it was a good idea. I mean, it was a good opportunity. It looked good. It, it, I mean, it, it paid well. Come on, somebody, right? I, I mean, it seems like this is what I should do. I mean, that's what everybody said I should do. And, and I just, I just want to leave you with this. I would... You can't put a price on your peace. And so many things in life that they're not bad things. But if, it, if it's costing you your peace, is it really worth it? And I love how Jesus called the Holy Spirit the comforter. The parakletos, over and over, he's the comforter. He's going to, the, the number one thing that the Holy Spirit did in my research, I was looking it up the 400 times where he moved in someone's life, was he guided them. He guided them. And it wasn't this, you know, the, I think Satan likes to drive people, but the Holy Spirit guides. Like a gentleman. He, he leads And so how do you define peace? What does that mean? I mean, is it, is it the absence of trouble? Is it the absence of, tr of, of tribulation or pain? Is that, is that peace? Is it a feeling? Is it an emotion? I think peace is not so much the absence of anything, but it's the presence of someone. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in our life, is he reminds us that there's a God in heaven that loves you, that cares for you, and he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground, how much more is he going to lead and guide your life if you ask him? If you lean on his wisdom and trust him and follow peace, if, if you don't have a peace about it, pray more. I would say wait. No matter how good it seems, no matter how many people think that it's a great idea, I, I don't know if there's anything more important in this world than to follow the peace of God in our life. Because it may mean that the decision <laughs> makes your life a little harder for a while. And it may mean that, that, that you have to make some hard decisions. And it may mean saying no to some things and cutting ties with some people or some places. But if you have the peace of God... can't put a price on it. So this is what you do. Don't you just bow your heads. I want to pray this morning for God, we thank you so much that you've given us not only your word, but your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. We thank you for the wisdom of people in our life that love us, that care for us. 
For Lord, right now we ask, we just ask for your peace. If you're here this, this morning and something has been keeping you up at night, You just haven't been at peace or at rest. And it may have been a blessing when it began, but now it doesn't feel that way. Lord, you said you would keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds on you. And so this is what I want you to do. Just every head bow and every eye close. Just, just think about the goodness of God in your life. I want to remind you that you've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I want to remind you that God is never going to leave you or forsake you. That, that no matter where you may find yourself this morning internally, you may not have the peace like you would like to have. There's a God who wants to speak peace into your soul. And so, Lord, we just open our hearts to you today. If there's anybody here that they have a decision in front of them right now, should they go, should they stay, should they take that job, should they not? Lord, I just pray for your peace to confirm the decision that they should make. Lord, help us to follow peace in our everyday life, in our communities, in our, how we lead our families. God, how we lead whatever it is that we do. Lord, help us to walk in your peace. If it requires striving and anxiety, and, and I mean, Lord, help us to discern, God, when it's you leading us and when maybe there's something else there that's driving us that's not you. We ask for your peace today, Lord, that passes understanding. We thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen.